my most amazing friends. How are you all today? I'm doing fantastic. And I'm coming in to test again with the Artist Loft pre-mixed or ready-mixed pouring paints from Michaels. So I've done a few other uh, techniques with these paints in videos prior to this. I will link them above. You're going to see an eye pop up for the last one that I just did. Right up in the upper right corner, you will see an eye pop up, pop up right now. If you click on that, it'll take you to that video. And then there's also another one you can watch. Anyway, I want to test out how they work with polypore and primary elements. I want to see how the two bases react to each other. So, Artist Loft, pre-mixed with its own pouring medium. Primary elements you mix with polypore to create your own paint system. So, or your own paints, it's a paint system, dry paint system. So, I want to see how the two bases, the polypore and whatever is mixed in the Artist Loft, I want to see how they react together, and I'm going to be using my airbrush that Miss Angie Gall sent me that I am so, so grateful for. I am just really, really excited about it. So, the two colors I'm going to use from Artist Loft will be Thalo Blue and Turquoise Blue. The colors of the primary elements that I'm going to be using are Ginger Flower, Teal Zircon, Cranberry, and Payne's Gray. I'm also going to be using some Turquoise by Golden. And my white is going to be Titanium White. Now, anything... Well, I'll say this. These two paints, oh, and I have a gold also. The gold is Arteza's or Arteza's Pearl Golden Hour, which is a gold. So these three paints I have mixed with polypore and water. That's it. Now, technically, the polypore isn't a pouring medium, but because I am using the primary elements with it and the Michaels have their own pouring medium in it, I'm going to mix my white, my turquoise, and the gold with this to see how they all behave together. So, no Floetrol, no silicone, only the polypore and water in those acrylic tube paints and polypore and water in these color art primary element colors. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour my white down. Now, my consistency is a little thick, so I'm going to add, because I'm using the airbrush, I'm gonna add a little bit more water. I want it to be kind of thinner so that it doesn't have a hard time moving around. And I'm going to pour the colors in a Dutch pour fashion, but I'm not doing a Dutch pour. So what that means is I'm going to put down the puddle of colors on top of a white base, and I'm going to swipe the white over my puddle and blow it out with the airbrush. So the first thing I need to do is put my white down. So here we go. This is a nine by 12 canvas that I'm working on. Just gonna put this cup here and see if I could catch some of this. And it's still a little bit thick. I would have liked it a little bit thinner, but it's a little too late now, so. And that cup is not a good idea. <laughs> so 
So I, I see how thick that it looks. Now, this is my second pour. I did one already testing this out and I could see that the pouring medium or the poly pour, this color has been sitting for about an hour. So it's starting to get a little thick in there, but we're gonna work with it and see how it goes. I probably should have added just a little more water than I did, but it's okay. It is what it is. So again, technically I'm not doing a Dutch pour, but I'm going to pour the colors as if I were doing one. Okay. Just getting my sides. Those little um, stands you see are actually plumbing parts from Home Depot. They make great stands. I think they do anyway. I have the uh, painter pyramids and all the other hoo-hahs. This is just easier for me. All right, so my white is down. I'm gonna torch it quick to get rid of the air bubbles so that when my painting dries, I don't have a bunch of pin holes because those bubbles will pop eventually and you don't want it to happen while your paint is curing because you'll have pin holes in your painting. So give it a good torch and then when you're done, I would recommend doing another torch because there's a lot of air trapped under the surface of the paint right now. I could see them in the glare of the light. All right, so here we go. I'm going to put down some of this ready mixed paint first. And it's only a 9 by 12, so we don't need much paint. And again, I tend to overdo it a lot, so. Then, you know, I'm going to go over to the golden turquoise. Again, this is mixed with polypor and water. Um... This is the teal zircon primary elements. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. It's a shimmery teal color. Then I'm going to use some of the Payne's gray primary elements. Mix with polypore and water. With the polypore in the primary elements, there's no measurement. It's you pour however much paint you want. However much paint you want to make, you pour that much polypore in a cup and then add a few scoops of the color. That's how that works. There are no measurements. Now, as far as the, how much color you put in, I think it's an eighth of a teaspoon per ounce, but that information is on the website. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I always add a little extra. This is the Michaels Artist Loft pre-mixed um, phthalo blue. And then I'm going to add in some of the ginger flower primary elements. We'll put that one right there. And I'm also going to just put a little bit of it around the edge like so. This is the Arteza 
golden hour mixed with polypore and we will do a little circle of that and then a few drops And then last will be the Cranberry by Primary Elements mixed with Polypore. Put a little drop of it there. And then a few drops around there. All right, so now I'm going to take some more white and I'm going to circle the puddle that I just made and the reason for doing that is so that you could swipe some white paint over your puddle without exposing your canvas and I'm just going to use my stick to kind of flop it over the puddle just like so Some little cells happening here. You see them blossoming. And again, there is no silicone. <clears throat> Excuse me, no silicone. So you see the little centers there getting a little reactions to the different paints. Very interesting. I'm popping the air bubbles again. This is really, really interesting that this is happening. I almost kind of want to stretch it out. See what happens, but... And I want to be able to use my cool airbrush. All right, so here we go. Now I am a brand new user of this air <laughs> brush. So please bear with me. Just gonna let it come work its way back in. And there are some cells developing. That is very interesting. Then they kind of go away. Oh, I love this thing. I love this air gun. Air, there we go. Listen, I'm calling it an air gun. I, I just can't get that out of my head. Uh, I don't know why, but I can't. Look, that is gorgeous. Wow. Now, you guys aren't seeing what I'm seeing because you're far away. But... That center area is beautiful. Just giving it a minute to close back up. I 
probably shouldn't be aiming this at me. <laughs> I just got a flick on my eye. Oh, God. Let me move. <laughs> Here we go again with the disastrous paintings blowing everywhere. You know, maybe if I don't turn it on until it's aimed where I want it. <laughs> wow, you guys, this is definitely very, very interesting. I would not think that cells would form from this. I almost don't want to do much more. very minimal very minimal Hmm. Oh, maybe a little bit more. Um, let's see. All right, I think I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to use my skewer to kind of draw out some of these lines to embolden them. Let me just pop these bubbles. The airbrush does create bubbles because you're blowing air into your paint. So you do have to torch. Right. Let me just grab my skewer here and I'm going to try to pull them out a little bit so that we get some of that color out further. Should probably use this side of the skewer so it's a little bit thicker. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's it's like minimal, but it isn't. And the bases are playing together nicely. I'm not getting a bunch of fractals or sometimes that can happen. So
I really like it. And that air gun, airbrush. Absolutely love it. Thank you, Angie. You made my year sending me that. Pull this one a little bit more and this one too okay that's it we're done let me give you a close-up So the Michaels played along nicely. Artist Loft, I should say. Pre-mixed colors played along nicely with the polypore. The tube paints, Arteza paint, the golden and the uh, fluid titanium white by golden played along nicely with the polypore. All played along nicely. So I'm very happy with that. So here we go. I'm not sure how these colors are showing on camera, but they're extremely bright here. And once they uh, dry and you're able to varnish or um, do a coat of resin, boy, do they pop, especially with resin. So there you have it guys that's my experiment for today i absolutely love playing around like this and just testing different things so i hope i didn't bore you too much and i hope you were able to learn something from this especially those of you that have the primary elements um you can see now that if you wanted to use the polypore with your white to um, make a painting it would work or any other tube paint well I shouldn't say any other because I haven't tested every brand of tube paint but so far with what I have tested it's worked perfectly so with that being said my friends I want to thank you all for tuning in I want to remind you of the color art contest if you don't know what I'm talking about go to colorart.com and check out the Bling It Mica Flake contest. There's a bunch of prizes being given away. The rules are all there. Uh, there are links for these products in the description below for the uh, primary elements or any color art product, 25% off. Links for KS Resin, my favorite new resin that offers free shipping in the US. Actually, they only deliver in the US. And um, anything else you may need that I have a link for. I mean, I don't have many, but <laughs> there are a few there. So I hope you guys all have a great day and happy pouring.